Hi, I'm Tara Babcock here for Zoom.TV Games, and I'm here with Tim Morton, who's working on the Command and Conquer game. So tell me a little bit about the new Command and Conquer, just like a general basis. How is it different from the really old games? Sure, so this Command and Conquer is a live service, which means that once we stand it up, we're going to keep releasing new content for it. So new maps, new game modes, maybe even brand new factions over time. It's set in the Generals universe, so Generals was a Command and Conquer game from 10 years ago that featured modern warfare units and three different factions that are in the near-Earth future, so it's a little bit futuristic, but it's pretty close to what we've got now. Cool, so in your presentation you were talking a little bit about some of the visual changes that you made, and you made some kind of cool jokes. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. So. Uh, this Command and Conquer is using the Frostbite engine, which is the same engine used for the Battlefield series of games. And that gives us DirectX 11 graphics, gives us real-time physics, dynamic destruction, so it really visually is the richest Command and Conquer that we've ever built. Uh, you know, I think it just creates that much more immersion for players when they're playing the game. Tell us about the shoes. Aha. So in the original Generals game, when you clicked on the worker units for the Global Liberation Army faction, they said, can we have some shoes? Because they were little barefoot guys running around building all the structures and collecting resources. So for this game, we gave in and we gave them shoes. That's very, very nice of you. So you did mention also something about, uh, there was a little bit of a fence taken to what the terrorist generals looked like. Can you tell me a little bit about that? In the original generals game, the GLA, the terrorist faction, was very Middle Eastern looking. Uh, in this new Command and Conquer, they really are global. So. Whereas before we offended some people, now we'll probably offend everybody. <laughs> that was my favorite line. Thank you for using it here in the interview. Sure. Also, what are some of the big like hardships you guys see when creating a free-to-play game? Like, is there anything that differs a lot from something that's like not free-to-play? It's a very different approach, and we've had to learn it as well, because I think for most of the team, this is the first time we haven't worked on a retail release, and instead of having everything done at once, we build things in stages, and we expect to keep working on this for many, many years. So it's a very different mindset in building it. I think probably the hardest part for us is just thinking about it in little pieces instead of everything at once. Exactly. Like in order to keep people hooked, you have to keep creating content and upgrading, basically. So what is it exactly that sets you apart from other RTS titles such as StarCraft? Command and Conquer really has a different feel to it, and uh, we love all of the other titles in the genre, you know, we're fans of real-time strategy in general, but Command and Conquer has features like crushing, it has features that are really unique to it as a universe, and we're working to get all of those implemented for this game. They're not all there today, but over time we're going to make it very true to the essence of what Command and Conquer is. How much of that upgrade has to do with the Frostbite engine? A big part of it is due to Frostbite. We really have never had this kind of graphics technology to work with before. Things like ambient occlusion and radiosity, it just sounds like a lot of jargon, but it really does make the world look better. So what are some of the features that are like free, and what do you have to pay for in this game? We're being really careful to not be pay to win. So anything that impacts gameplay, you can either pay or earn just by playing the game. There are some items that are purely visual that are things that you can only pay for because they don't impact gameplay. Uh, but examples of things that you can pay for are generals, which are unique gameplay takes on the base factions that are centered around one strategy or favorite weapon. Uh, you can also get uh, a premium mode, which gives you more experience points or you know other boosts as you play along. But again, anything that you can pay for, you can also earn just by playing the game so we keep it fair. So a lot of it is aesthetic. You can't just like be like the best in the game if you're having money, right? Exactly. That, that makes it fair. That's much better for the player. So um, do you guys take any like other tips away from other free-to-play games like League of Legends or something? You know a lot of people on the team really enjoy other free-to-play games and I think it's great to see the approach that they've taken. I think for the team, there are lessons to be learned from every game out there. Um, there's no specific game that we're necessarily drawing from over another, but I think there's a lot of great examples of free-to-play. And how important is social media in free-to-play games? Social media is key. We really provide a lot of hooks for people to bring friends in from 
Facebook or from Xbox, PlayStation networks, so that people can not just play with their friends, but also let their friends know about the game and hopefully grow it that way.